So shall I start? Uh, yes, uh, good morning to all participants. Uh, today's session is resource Dr. Rajiv Talyan, sir. Myself, Dr. A.S. Kuswa, Associate Professor and Head Department of Pharmacology. I am happy to you in day six sessions, morning sessions, AICT sponsored online short-term training program, fifth second entitled Computer Added Drug Designing, a customized and innovative solutions to the greatest challenges in chemistry. Organized by Amar Sahib Ajit Singh Jujar Singh Memorial College of Pharmacy, Bela, and autonomous. It is a great pleasure for me to introduce his sessions speaker, resource person, Dr. Rajiv Talian. Today, his talk on FGF21 gene therapy for metabolic syndromes and neurological disorders. Dr. Rajiv Talian, currently working as associate professor and department of pharmacy, Birla Institute of Tech Science, which is Dr. Talyan has vast experience in the field of neuropharmacology, cardiovascular pharmacology, and drug toxicity studies. He has delivered invited talk in several international conferences. He is member of editorial board, reviewer of many reputed journals, including neuropharmacology, pharmacological research, brain behavior research, and drug discovery today. He is member of national and international societies, British Pharmacological Society, UK National Union of Basic and Clinical Pharmacology, live member of Indian Pharmacological Society, live member of A India, live member of Indian Academy of Neuroscience and American Society of Pharmacology and Experimental Therapeutics, editorial member of Journal of BioSC, scholar academic journal of Pharmacy Scholar General Bioscience. He is a member of Institutional Human Aid Committee registered with SIDASCO and DHR of India. Dr. Talyan has served award or his credit included University Immersion Award of Bits Pilani in year of 2018, Professor Manjit Singh Gold Medal Award for the research in molecular pharmacology by Indian General of Pharmacological Society in year of 2015. T. Surkumari Gold Medal Award with cash prize for the best patient paper in diabetic and metabolic disorder in year of 2014. Best poster and young scientist of March year of 2015. He has been working on several government funded projects DST, UGC, ICMR, DBT, and industry response sponsored project also. He visited, participated in several international conferences held in London, Dubai, and Taiwan. He guided several graduate, graduate and PhD students in their research work. He has published in excess of peer reviews, international and national research paper with good impact factor. Google citation score citations 602, H index 16, IE index 10. He is delivered more than 50 talk invitee lectures in various conferences. Now I am welcome to Dr. Rajiv Talyan, sir. In this session, please share your value and experience of. Welcome, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much and good morning to all. Uh, thank you for the nice word. Dr. Ajit Kumar, uh, I would like to first extend my uh, just gratitude to all the organizers, uh, like uh, the directors as well as uh, the principal, Dr. Ajit Kumar uh, Kuswaha, Monica Gupta and Rajiv, which is my old friend. So thank you very much for the invitations for sharing some part of research. So I would like to discuss uh, some part of research which we have conducted in our laboratory last several years. I joined Bits Planning in 2011, uh, 2012 actually in January. And then uh, we start working on very interesting process known as epigenetics, which is about the genetics process and how epigenetics is modified actually in chronic disease. 
So I would like to uh, share my thought and uh, would like to give some uh, research which we have conducted in our laboratory. And as you are well aware, uh, I think Dr. Ajay, shall I start yes, now? Because, yeah, okay, thank you. So uh, because uh, we start looking some breakthrough related to the molecular targets which could be utilized for getting some newer drug or at least for clinical translation purpose we could contribute somewhere. So starting from epigenetic process, we're starting from epigenetics in neurological disorders. First, we explored the link of metabolic syndrome because it is not only risk for heart, which is well known at that time, but we start looking whether this metabolic syndrome is having link with neurological disorder or not. And very interestingly, we found a very strong link with metabolic syndrome because if you induce the metabolic syndrome like conditions in animal and uh, you just start developing neurological uh, problem, it would be several fold high. That means uh, metabolic syndrome is a very strong risk factor for neurological problem. Followed by we start looking the molecular link and then we uh, stumble down to this uh, epigenetic process. Followed by our uh, interest gradually in peas and uh, as uh, this title, which is on very advanced topic related to zine therapy, zine could be used like a drug. So before taking much time, I would like to share my screen. So please confirm if you able to see the uh, screen. Hello. Are you able to see the screen, Dr. Ajay? Yes, sir. Yes, well, sir. Visible. Okay. Uh, you will try to make it in full mode. Yes, now it is in full mode. So this is the title of today's talk. That is FGF221, which is a very important uh, glucose and energy regulators, local hormones. And very interestingly, we found in our initial result that is provide a very strong anti-diabetic and anti-obesity uh, effect from it. Perfect. I to Okay, sorry. So this is related to one of, one piece of the work which we are trying to just conduct it in our laboratory. And it was very recently supported by ICMR uh, in a support of 43 lakhs. Uh, let me discuss, not taking too much time of you because uh, we already late. So see uh, this F21 gene therapy for metabolic syndrome and neurological disorders. So I belong as already Ajay Kumar mentions from Bitsplani and uh, uh, there are some very interesting facts related to Bitsplani. Bitsplani is a very eminent uh, institute all over the world, not only in India. It's eliminated, recognized highly worldwide. It got the Institute of Eminence Government of India before two years. And uh, we are very proud to announce this time that uh, by QS World Ranking, it is World Ranking, it's not National Ranking. In national Ranking is always on uh, fifth positions or sixth positions, last several years. And even in World Ranking, this time we are in 150 to 200 uh, window. That means worldwide, we are in top 150 institute uh, of pharmacy. In addition to this, if you see, Bisplani has got 125 crore, funding support from DST for established innovation hub. Uh, in addition to this, if you see which uh, Plani Pharmacy Department along with Bioscience Department also got sanctions, uh, DBT filter of 9.5 crore. So this year, 2021 uh, starting is good enough for which Plani, although it's have its own legacy last several years, but in terms of getting support from government of India, it's huge this time in 2021. So let me start the discussions related to metabolic syndrome. I think most of you are aware uh, uh, because uh, most of uh, researchers and even faculty are working in the area of metabolic disorders. Some are working in diabetes mellitus, some are working in obesity. So metabolic syndrome is a umbrella term which comprising type two diabetes mellitus, obesity, insulin resistance, as well as hypertension uh, associated dyslipidemia. So this cluster problems may increase the risk for heart. It is well known last several years 
as I told you, when we start looking in 2012, whether this metabolic syndrome, especially insulin resistance, would it be getting affected the brain uh, uh, utilizations of glucose? Because when insulin resistance develops, the tissue is unable to utilize glucose. Glucose is unable to move inside the cells. Therefore, your mitochondria is unable to utilize and not able to generate ATP. When glucose is unable to be utilized by the cell, then it would start to break down the proteins, fat, and whatever the other options available. And in that way, it will increase the risk to organs. So organ failure, one by one started in case of uh, uh, this metabolic syndrome, especially type 2 diabetes mellitus or insulin resistance. So when we just found that insulin receptors is located in brain, that uh, at that time in 2012, we are very sure that uh, it would definitely affecting uh, uh, the brain utilization of glucose very similar to our uh, other tissue then we uh, wrote a project to uh, ugc and got supported from ugc which uh, uh, is related to exploring the role of uh, metabolic syndrome and its links to neurological disorder in which we have explored the link related to glycogen synthase kinase enzyme which is very much affected in insulin resistance <coughs> so it <clears throat> so initial result are uh, just very promising and then we start uh, exploring one process followed by another process and then we uh, uh, started looking for epigenetic process so i would uh, just discuss all these one by one starting from epigenetics and up to the gene therapy how we have moving uh, uh, based on our results how our results just maybe uh, just a uh, the trigger uh, which trigger us to explore more and more molecular targets so if you see this uh, recent advance i think most of you are aware because epigenetics is the recent gray area in which most of the research are working especially explored very much in cancer in addition to the cancers there are certain other uh, disease or disorders which is getting attention of epigenetics so we start in 2000 to look uh, 12 to look whether this epigenetic process can affect because uh, uh, insulin resistance type 2 diabetes mellitus, they are chronic problem. And in chronic stress, the cell's adaptive process might be involved in pathological conditions. So we start looking of epigenetic process, which are related to post-translation modifications. When the process even over, there are certain changes. So how it is possible that when the process complete, it may allow to change. And very interestingly, if you look, epigenetic is a process of heritable changes without changes nucleotide or DNA. And it is very much possible because if you just see the DNA, which are wrapped by uh, the stone protein tail, and this is stone uh, along with methylations or stone acetylations and even ubiquitinations, which are available at the tail, uh, would allow certain modifications under chronic stress. So uh, we started our work in uh, metabolic syndrome and very interestingly, we found very strong correlations of uh, metabolic syndrome with neurological disease, including Alzheimer's, Parkinson's disease, as well as the epigenetic modifications is also very much play a role. And then we uh, interestingly noted that when you, you, you target epigenetic process, the changes which occurred can be very strikingly reverse. All the changes we found significantly reverse and animal behavior related to uh, cognitive deficit is significantly improved. In terms of uh, looking the support to neurons, whether it is getting affecting to cellular level or not, we just look uh, the growth factor, including BA, DNF, CRAB, and we found it significantly increased the level of these growth factors when you inhibit the enzymes which are a part of epigenetic modifications. So that work has been published in very high reputed journals, including pharmacological research, neuropharmacology, uh, Journal of Molecular Neuroscience in that times. Uh, if you uh, just see the epigenetics, because uh, those who are not aware, I would like to very quickly discuss this part, epigenetics. What do we mean by the epigenetics? Epigenetics is a process which is even considered about the genetics. So very interestingly, if you see, there is uh, changes which can be in chromosome without alterations in DNA sequence. That means uh, uh, DNA is not uh, altered, but its functioning may be changed. Like uh, changing in certain proteins may allow uh, 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 to affect the DNA transcription process and it work like as a uh, repressive molecules or repressive proteins. It will not allow the DNA to be properly transcribed. In that way, 
it may be contributing in certain pathological conditions. So primary mechanism, if you see related to epigenetics, is methylation so on the cytosine, uh, this uh, uh, nucleotide in DNA. In addition to this, uh, if you see transcription modifications, which is mainly related to stone. And stone is getting affected either through uh, acetylations, methylations, and even ubiquitination process. And when uh, uh, there is a chronic stress, the chances of getting modifications through this process is very high, and it may leads to uh, uh, affect the DNA transcriptions and the specific proteins or products can be formed, which can be uh, involved in pathogenesis of these problems. So in addition to this post-transcriptional modifications, even involvement of small interferon RNA, also a part of epigenetics, which is very much gaining attention even nowadays. Several researchers are looking for the role of these SIRNA or post-transcriptional modifications. How could it be uh, uh, inhibited and how could the functions of normal cells can be restored back. So uh, very quickly, if you see from uh, uh, this cartoons or this di di diagram, this is stone proteins, which is wrap the DNA. And because of uh, its overall positive charge, which it will uh, put on the DNA. So it's tightly bind on the DNA. And if you see here, uh, the binding of uh, uh, this stone uh, on DNA, which wrap it, may be getting affected by acetylation process and acetylations of stone protein allow transcription process. So sometime during continuous stress, uh, uh, hyperacetylations uh, because of acetic enzyme is uh, resulting the pathological changes. So there are two set of enzymes which uh, regulate this acetylation process. One is stone acetyl transferase, another one stone deacetyl transferase. So when uh, we found this, we initially started looking the role of acetyl. And when we inhibit this acetyl enzyme, all the changes which are brought out by this epigenetic process is significant to reverse and pathological conditions, especially because we targeting neurological problem, they are improved a lot in terms of behavioral improvement, not only in behavioral improvement, even the cellular and molecular changes which are a uh, hallmark of the disease can be significantly attenuated. So the major mechanism of this epigenetic is related to, I again uh, just uh, uh, summarize the same things like promoting remodeling, DNA methylation, cystone acetylation, destylations, and, and therefore, we are all interested to uh, target this enzyme like HMT, stone methyl transferase, or acetic enzyme, because the major problem either hypermethylations or acetylation. So, if you target this enzyme, that process can be inhibited, and the chances of restore back the normal functioning of cell is very high. So you see uh, this work, uh, which was published by us based on our finding, how it could getting affected the neurological process and whether it can support the neurodegeneration process, inhibit the neurodegeneration process or not. So even at cellular level, we measure the level of brain derived neurotrophic factors, which was significantly improved when you inhibit the epigenetic enzyme, which it participate in epigenetic modifications. CRAB, BDNF, uh, BDNF, even uh, this uh, nerve growth factors, all are significantly improved. In addition to this, if you see the uh, hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease like amyloid beta, tau, uh, all are significantly attenuated when we target this epigenetic process. So uh, uh, gradually we, our interest is uh, moving and we uh, observed that there is a problem in case of attack inhibitors uh, because when initially we have taken the pan inhibitor and then we conducted a study in which we have taken a uh, different class uh, uh, SDAC inhibitor because we want to ensure which expression is maximum in brain and then we confirm that SDAC class 2 expression is maximally expressed in brain. Therefore, we have uh, to study to selective SDAC inhibitor in brain. But we found a uh, toxicity issue associated with that approach. Therefore, we have written another project to DST First, it was sanctioned by DST sir. And in third project, we just uh, proposed that we could deliver selectively these molecules by making nanoformulations. And it was also supported by DST nanomissions. And uh, uh, when we are working on uh, this, we, we found that uh, it, it could affect the weight in animals. And then we start looking how the animal's weight is significantly altered and significantly changing. When uh, you put the high diet, the condition is developed. But when you start the treatment, some animals' weight is lost, some animals' weight is increased. Then we thought it is a normal process, but uh, later on we start looking whether it is related to certain hormones which regulate the energy. 
And then we start looking for the role of this HDF21 because it is a main hormone synthesized uh, local hormones, which is uh, very much involved to regulate uh, the energy demand and expenditure. And then we start looking at the role of FGF21. So FGF21, we in our pilot study, we found very, very strong and uh, significant uh, efficacy in obesity in type 2 diabetes mellitus. But uh, actually, because its regulations by gene is significantly altered at the disease progress. So it could not be the viable approach if you go by its agonist or uh, its, uh, its uh, uh, agents which increase its expression uh, because it is quite difficult. Moreover, its pharmacokinetic problem is another clinical challenge. Therefore, we thought, can, could we deliver uh, the gene uh, like a drug in the brain? Could it be possible for us? And then we have collaborated with one of the very good institute uh, in Taiwan, uh, that is Taipei Medical University, where they are having very excellent facility. We have collaborated with them. Even I went to Taiwan for three months and uh, just to uh, uh, learn the technique. And then my student, uh, Ms. Voilina, went for seven months. And then he learned all these techniques, how the zine could be delivered with the help of factor. So our interest gradually increasing because epigenetic also modified the expression of this FGF21. So it started from epigenetics and now we are looking at the role of FGF21. It seems that the epigenetic modifications can also affect certain hormones which participate in your energy demand and expenditure. Therefore, uh, we look, start looking at the role of this FGF21 and how the problem could be Managed. So we propose that FGF21 can be uh, delivered directly to the brain uh, 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 with the help of certain vectors, which is a carrier. You just uh, uh, make uh, the delivery through this vector. Either you make the delivery by making the changes in the cell and then injected it, but uh, because neurons is not uh, regenerated, so you are well aware, uh, they hardly just uh, uh, divide. Therefore, uh, this is uh, 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 not viable approach. So the viable approach is either directly the gene could be delivered like uh, a gene gun or to the carrier like vector. And uh, uh, there are several vectors like adenovirus vectors is very much available clinically. Oh, sorry, for this as purpose. And uh, lentivirus because we start uh, looking which one is uh, best carrier which can deliver the gene uh, correctly to the right part of the brain where our interest is. So based on these informations, this study has been uh, designed and uh, our focus is on gene therapy. So I would like to discuss briefly about gene therapy also. Gene therapy, as most of you are aware, is a very advanced technique that use genes like a drug. And uh, most of the problems which are uh, uncurable uh, and there is no solution for such problem can be coming down the lines, maybe completely curable because the faulty genes uh, which is uh, involved in the pathological conditions can be replaced. Or even those uh, proteins which are because of mutated genes is getting involved in the patho pathological conditions, you knock out them or you deliver uh, uh, the oligonucleotides which cannot allow that uh, genes to work. And in that way, our expression of genes which are involved can be controlled. So this seems is a very promising approach and uh, most of uh, the good university, most of the researcher is working to find out the solutions for serious problem, including cancer, including neurological problem, because most of the neurological problem is not curable. As you are aware, there is only uh, uh, symptomatic relief. The class of clinical drugs, which is clinically available, unfortunately provides symptomatic relief. There is no uh, progression uh, be healthy. So it needs a, a permanent solution for such, pro uh, such problem, because the patients which is suffering from these is in a very, very uh, pity conditions and they are hopeless because there are no hope seems for such serious problem. So this gene therapy seems is a promising approach. Therefore, our interest is nowadays is focused on this very interesting technique. So it could be possible to replace a faulty or mutated gene uh, that could be involved in a conditions like cancer uh, or rendering inactive the genes which are overactivating. You just uh, delivered the, the genes, which could be faulty, which could be replaced by your healthy gene. So uh, these are some basic approaches which could be possibly uh, uh, having a solution for the problem, which currently 
uh, is not having a solution. They are incurable. And uh, unfortunately, most of them, the neurological disorder is also incurable. There is only symptomatic treatment available. So we start working on this. It seems a very, very interesting approach. Therefore, uh, uh, we start working on gene therapy. So gene therapy could be uh, either ex vivo process or in vivo. Ex vivo process means that you just modified uh, uh, the cell. The genes of interest can be uh, just inserted in a cell, then it culture. When the cell taken in that in desired gene, it could be injected to uh, uh, the desired part. That would be X, Y approach. Uh, uh, but uh, it would not very effective approach, as I told you. Those are less dividing tissue or cell, uh, including neurons. Then uh, what would be the other options? The other options is directly delivering of the gene or through or, or carrier, that is vector. So vector are two types. One is a virus vector or non-virus vector. Virus vector is having an advantage because they can uh, adjust multiply at very faster rate. The transfections of uh, the desired genes is very high. That means that can be a good carrier to deliver your genes like a drug. And then we start working on the vectors in which first we starting adenovirus, adeno associated virus and lantivirus. So this work related to FGF21 we're trying to deliver this FGF21 gene through lantivirus because lantivirus could be a good vector for non-dividing cell. So first uh, gene therapy, I think most of you are aware, uh, was uh, in one of four years old uh, girls. In it, it was successful and uh, uh, the girls is suffering from this adenosine DMNAs, which may uh, affect the immunity because of accumulations. The efficiency of these enzymes is involved in serious severe combined immunodeficiency syndrome, and it would it, it was very correctly cured. So it started uh, uh, the hope for such problem, but because of ethical concerns, because of safety issue, uh, uh, there are a lot of lag period from the beginning and to date. Likewise, if you see the CFTR, uh, uh, which is a cystic fibrosis conditions in which this protein regulators could be uh, just modified because of the defective gene. And uh, because of that regions, the chloride start accumulating, which may attract the water. And emphysema uh, in lungs is a serious clinical problem because of this faulty gene. So this problem uh, was already treated by delivering the genes. But later on, because of ethical concerns, and there are other issues, certain other issues, including safety issue, uh, this approach, as I told you, was having a very large lagging period. But nowadays, the momentum uh, related to this approach is started gaining because of uh, our better understanding, better uh, sophisticated technique and equipment which we are having right now. So it could be uh, related to you just see the targeted gene and uh, can correct it. After correcting the genes, you can deliver it with the help of a vector or even you can deliver directly like uh, the gene gun which is available. So it may be related to gene augmentations or uh, replacing the faulty genes, which is, seems a very good approach. And uh, I believe it would be the uh, uh, game changer. It revolutionized the treatment options for those problems for whom there is no treatment available. So such patients may be very effectively cured with the help of such gene therapy approach. So see, uh, related to lentivirus, uh, because uh, you see the background related to this uh, lentivirus, there are certain uh, research work have been done by other researchers. And our interest is started by looking the efficacy of this FCF21, uh, 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 making this lentivirus transfected with this gene, and then delivering it in a animals, which is having metabolic syndrome associated with uh, Alzheimer's disease. That means metabolic syndrome comorbid with Alzheimer's disease, which we have already standardized. When you use the high fat diet, especially lard based diet, uh, it would take at least eight to 10 months because I even review several paper and uh, they mentioned that uh, uh, this problem is started after three weeks or four weeks. It is not possible. At least six to eight weeks is needed to start the uh, complications related to metabolic syndrome, right? So we designed this study in which we are uh, focusing uh, this uh, CAI regions of hippocampus because this is mainly involved in cognitive process. And therefore, our interest to deliver these genes, whether it correct the abnormalities, 
related to the cognitive problem or not. So these are the overall uh, work which we have conducted in our laboratory. I will summarize and then I focus on the topic of today discussions. This is implication of FC21 and its uh, uh, delivery to the brain to test its efficacy in metabolic syndrome, especially brain insulin resistance associated with Alzheimer's disease. So the first work which uh, we have started, uh, like exploring the role of epigenetic in metabolic syndrome, uh, uh, comorbid with Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease. So first we have very clearly identified the link. Metabolic syndrome is a very strong risk factor, not only for CAVS, it is also a strong risk factor for neurological problem. And then we started uh, looking the molecular mechanism and we start uh, on epigenetic process. We explored it and we found very, very promising results. Very significant reversible changes we have been uh, observing last several years. Then uh, we also uh, just exploring this, uh, this epigenetic process in brain cancer uh, like glioma. In addition to this, HMT inhibitor alone and in combinations with immunotherapy or immunomodulator in triple negative based cancer is also our research test area in which one of the PhD student is working because immune therapy is unable to respond in a cancer cell and it would be because of epigenetic modifications. It will allow the, uh, uh, the proteins which are expressed on cell surface on the cancer cell. Therefore, immune system recognizable cells like major stability complex cells is unable to recognize it. And it is because of the epigenetic uh, modifications which may help the cancer cell to escape the immunomediated dissections. So this is also a very interesting process in which we are working related to epigenetic uh, involvement. The another works in which one another student is working, uh, a role of epigenetic and autophagy in metabolic syndrome, how the mispolded protein or the proteins which are broken down, why they are not clearing through autophagic process, what went wrong during the pathologic changes. So this work is uh, going on in collaborations with Taipal Medical University, while uh, uh, this uh, role of epigenetics uh, uh, in cancers and uh, uh, photodynamic therapy is with INIH uh, Canada laboratory that is in joint collaborations. Uh, the, this work, implication of GF21, as I told you, is our recent work in which we are focusing to find out the uh, efficacy if we could deliver the gene directly to the brain. So I would not go in very details. The initial result which we got related to neurological problem, uh, we conducted the study to Alzheimer's disease first, followed up by Parkinson's disease. So this is uh, the experimental protocol, how we conducted our study. And this study is conducted uh, up to three months. And uh, I again emphasize, if you want to develop these models, uh, metabolic syndromes, you just go with high fi diet. And high fi diet is not enough to make the pathological changes. Uh, although I reviewed several papers and found some researcher from India, they are reporting that uh, high fi diet uh, for three weeks, four weeks develop these uh, changes. But uh, I strongly refuse it because it's not possible by high fi diet uh, because of several factors. Animals can tolerate, animal weight can be increased. But uh, the insulin resistance like conditions is very hardly developed within one month or two months. But if you add uh, STG add at a low dose, then it would increase the risk and uh, metabolic syndrome could be easily developed, which mimic the symptoms like clinical metabolic syndrome, right? So in that way, uh, the first study was designed and it was conducted by one of my students who is currently working in Canada in one of the neurological best research institute uh, uh, where he was working as a research assistant as well as postdoctoral fellow. So he conducted this study and uh, he explored uh, the cognitive deficit uh, because we are having video tracking system. So all our recording being conducted and uh, been observed after 24 hour or whatever the time periods uh, based on the study which was designed. You see the modal standardizations, if you see the body weight changes, serum glucose, and even lipo lipid profile abnormalities, because all these are uh, uh, the changes which found in metabolic syndrome. So we standardize initially the model, and if you see the changes, up to four a week, you very clearly look there is no changes, very significant changes not occurred. It was 
on eight weeks. If you uh, continuously feed hyper feed fed hyper diet, and uh, in our, uh, last uh, week you can uh, add streptozootocin, then the changes significantly other and it was confirmed by us so this is related to how the model have been standardized and uh, uh, after standardization these models uh, we observe the changes significantly related to uh, neuronal changes including pycnotic neurons abnormal neuro <coughs> sorry in uh, the dentite gyrus regions and uh, the hippocampus ci regions which was very significant in high fight diet animals which are treated uh, along with STGF. If you see the next part of a study in which we even look for uh, which uh, epigenetic uh, uh, expressions is more in brain because it might be different from other organ. And we found the class second expressions is more if you want to target any neurological problem or even cancer related to brain like Yuma, you would go with class second. And this class second molecules, uh, MC156, which we got uh, a gift sample from uh, USA, uh, we confirm uh, this is the best molecules and the class of the stone, uh, which would be more uh, uh, effectively present and uh, modifications of SDX second is involved in neurological problems. So that result is clearly indicated in which we have taken pan inhibitors, uh, SDX4B, C1994, and as the second inhibitor 156, as the three inhibitor like cetinol, all have been tested. And we confirm this based on the result. We just see very quickly. Uh, it is very significant result, not only to the neurological abnormalities improvement, it also uh, improve the supporting molecules, which can support uh, uh, and inhibit the neurodegenerations like brain drive neurotrophic factor, whose level is significantly, if you see, if you compare with normal pellet diet and normal animals, it would almost similar to that. So it would give us very confidence that this is the most effective approach by which you can move further. Now come down to uh, the current research study in which we are trying to make uh, antivirus productions and transactions. Uh, and if you see this study in which we are trying to deliver FGF21 gene like a drug, Induction of uh, metabolic syndrome and Alzheimer disease-like symptoms is already standardized by our laboratory. And we have uh, just given the high fi diet along with low-dose STGR at least 10 weeks. After eight weeks, it is significant changes we observed. Therefore, we follow the same models, which we already standardized. And then see behavioral and biochemical changes, which is uh, involved in Alzheimer disease pathology, which are comorbid with metabolic syndrome. Metabolic syndrome is confirmed by uh, confirming insulin resistance in brain. Uh, for Alzheimer disease, we also uh, uh, just measure the specific biomarker or hallmark of this disease, like Alzheimer uh, tau hyperpolarization, hyper, uh, uh, hyper acid, uh, sorry, this amyloid beta and tau hyperphospholysin, glial cell drive neurotrophy factor, nerve growth factors, and brain drive neurotrophic factors, which is giving the support to prevent the neurodegenesis. And even these factors believe to start neurogenesis. That means although neurogenesis is not very much, but these growth factors, their significant elevations is indicating that they not only inhibit or attenuate the neurodegenesis, they also support to certain extents uh, neuro, healthy neurons development because we significantly observe the changes to pycnotic and healthy neurons. The level of healthy neurons is significantly elevated uh, when you compare with the high fi diet SCJ treated animals. So it gives us very much confidence that it's a very significant and viable approach in which we are working. So related to this work, if you see how the uh, insulin resistance have been developed, how the model have been standardized, how this lentivirus is uh, injected and delivered to uh, CA regions of the brain. All are uh, related to this part. If you see uh, development of lentivirus expressions uh, containing FGF21 uh, or in trust of gene, uh, it would be done in brief. You see how we have uh, made this lentivirus, which is having this FGF21. So it is based on the restrictive enzyme. And if you see this is uh, and not, which is used to 
cut uh, the uh, lentivirus plasmid or the other plasmid in which we allow the transfections of the scene and then uh, when it will be present, then we will deliver it to the animals. So before STZ injections, we have injected the lentivirus, which is having FGF21, and then compare with non-FGF21 treated animals and FGF21 treated animals. And to our surprise, it is very strong correlations and we found very, very promising fidelity to FGF21. If you see uh, the development process uh, through gel electrophoresis and the transfections of HEK29 cell and uh, uh, with the help of uh, imaging as well as uh, this uh, uh, gel electrophoresis, it could be uh, very clear that the cell is having our interested gene which could be ready to be delivered to brain. This is the experimental protocol, which uh, because the data have not been yet published, so I would not take in all the data. Uh, I take only the general data, which could be shared with the audience. So all lipid profile and all the biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease or other neurological problem were measured based on ELISA kit and histopathological analysis have also been done. If you see our video tracking system, uh, uh, which indicating very significant improvement when you compare FCF 20 treated animals and non-treated animals. With the help of uh, this uh, 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 navigation task, which is through Morris Water Maze and probe trial, you can clearly look uh, one minute because uh, I can keep it this idea. Yes. If you see the quantitative difference, it would be very clear here and improvement to this group, which is having FCF21 is significant. In addition to this, if you see even the another behavioral para, uh, test, uh, like the radial AMS test, and if you see here, it is also again, to our surprise, having very strong correlations. That means this uh, uh, FCF20 gene can be taken and uh, participating to improve the insulin sensitivity and corrected the uh, molecular changes which has happened because of that regions. It may be uh, uh, in uh, maybe just three beta or other molecular process which may be getting affected by FCF21. So in our future works, we will try to find out which one the molecular signaling process or uh, uh, the second messenger or third messenger pathway might be involved or which downstream or upstream pathway is getting affected by the genes because we found very, very promising result. And believe me, this is uh, astounding and uh, uh, give us very confidence to move further to explore the role of this because we found significant improvement, especially to the nerve growth factor, which indicating that yes, it would be uh, in coming down the lines, maybe explored in a more scientific manner for neurological problem. If you see uh, this, uh, uh, the slide, in which you see the difference related to the pycnotic and unhealthy neurons. If you compare this and this, you will see significant, very significant uh, uh, response of this FGF21. So in summary, if you see uh, this FGF21 is a promising uh, molecules, promising gene, even you can make either it's a receptor agonist or any approach by which you can increase its expression uh, because it's expressions is already known to increase several fold in diabetic and obesity patients. And development resistance to this might be the problem because initially it will try to adjust like initially insulin tried to adjust and then insulin resistance develop, leptin resistance develop in cane obesity. So it is the, it is the reasons because uh, uh, someone asked us why uh, you are going with the expression of this gene because expression and level of genes has already been reported in obesity. Then I uh, just inform him that it is because of simple fact, because initially it is an adaptive process. And if this adaptive process may not be responding because of chronic stress continuously, it may develop resistance. It is very much due for several pathological conditions and thereby we start looking at its role. And it is very, very clear uh, uh, in brief, if I summarize, we have found very strong correlations of this FCF20, this fibrograss factor 21, and its role in neurological problem. 
and uh, uh, I would also share some more results which are related to the signaling molecular changes. But because we are planning to go for a uh, patent or some other process, so I could restrict myself to share only the results which can be shared in audience. So thank you very much for patience hearing. And this is a problem to online. I don't know. I don't see your facial gestures. So I don't know whether you're able to understand. So I could not change my pace of uh, uh, this discussions. If I look your face, if I found that you are unable to understand, I can emphasize that point again and again. But online mode, it is quite difficult to understand whether you are just uh, understanding or not. It is uh, not possible. And this is the limitations, whatever the best sources we are having online or online platform. Okay, so this is the list of publications for a few very good research papers which we have published and acknowledgement to all our research student, uh, especially uh, my uh, thanks goes to Dr. Saurabh Sarma who did PhD uh, in Bits Plani under my supervisions. The another student, uh, Dr. R. Shruti, who is working currently in Washington University while Saurabh is working in Canada. And Mr. Sartlal is working on epigenetics in uh, uh, glioma. Mrs. Voilina is working with Taipei Medical University uh, because the supervisor is also from Taipei Medical University. She is working on epigenetic and autophagic process in Alzheimer and Parkinson disease. Ms. Geetika is working in uh, metabolic syndrome and uh, to uh, repurpose the anti-diabetic agent like repeglinite in diabetes associated with Alzheimer's disease. Mr. Rajesh Pradhan is working on triple negative breast cancers along with NIH in a collaborative mode. And Mr. Rajiv Ranjan is also uh, a collaborative uh, student because our collaboration is with CSI lab Siri in which he trying to develop and make a diagnostic devices by which we can uh, observe the biomarker even in saliva and urine. So this is my research group who is currently working with me. So this is some reference which we have taken to port this. Thank you very much again. Thank you very much, sir, for your knowledgeable session. And now it's time for the query session from the participants' side. I request the audience uh, to please type uh, uh, your queries in the chat box. If you have any query, kindly type in the chat box. Yes, I would be very happy to respond if anybody, anybody having any questions. Sir, uh, yes, sir uh, we have one query from Dr. Ashok Behra. Mm -hmm. He is asking, uh, can you please share some of the targets? What do you think uh, that uh, from uh, the drug can be designed and what are the novel proteins and target sites? I think uh, uh, if you just listen to this lectures, I emphasize the role of epigenetics. And it is very, very gray area. Most of the research, including our collaborator in Taipei Medical University, they are working to make a specific STEC 6 or STEC class 2 inhibitor. And Dr. Kunal, who is uh, even uh, our colleagues, uh, who was uh, uh, working over there last several years, and a permanent faculty, is also working to make the molecules related to STEC 6. This is one. Second, you can go to Baclean or even you can go with uh, certain uh, protein modifications which could be possibly involved in Alzheimer if you are taking uh, the example of Alzheimer. Or you see the misfolding and folding which is very interesting process and be taken care by physiological process through ubiquitase or even autophagic process. So that would be an interesting another approach in which the researcher can look for the possibility how they can make the molecules like rapamycin like molecules already available. So again, they can think of to make such molecules which would be really, really helpful for them. Sir, uh, 
further extending his question he is asking what do you think that uh, does on that target existing drugs if they are uh, because if uh, you need to understand epigenetic it's not a vast term it is uh, having the important uh, modifications which are either mediate if you the methylations one possibility because if you look uh, the uh, the the proteins which are available on the tail when it wrap to dna so the chances where uh, it might be having it might be having uh, the proteins or amino acid which could be getting affected through acetylations methylations ubiquitations so maximally explored the site which is mainly involved and easily targeted is methyl transferase or acetyl enzyme because as that enzyme inhibition is very effective across likewise stone methyl transferase and even stone methyl enzyme is having several isoforms and a recent project which we got from dvt even i have mentioned in our uh, discussions during my discussions from dvt 9.5 prod project which is on epigenetics in which we trying to uh, just synthesize a specific molecules selectively for hmt in which we are targeting the isoform which mean the solid tumor i think uh, he or she can just go to that approach that would be very easy yes we uh, for your information so so we are having central analytical laboratory in which we are having everything uh, lcms ms con focal microscopy cytochromography very advanced analytical uh, equipment we are having and uh, most of the equipment which is more than crore they are in central facility so we are having a very advanced central analytical facility in which the student uh, can work to any extent and uh, uh, the work which is presented here it is needed con focal cytochromography same time all can be useful to take the help and confirm your molecules whether the desirable molecules have been synthesized or not okay sir sir uh, thank you you have uh, very well cleared all the queries and uh, i am very thankful to you sir for delivering this very informative and knowledgeable session about the gene therapy of the fibroblast growth factor 21 in the treatment of neurological disorders including alzheimer disease and metabolic disorder associated disorder like type 2 dm obesity your presentation is helpful to the participants to know about the gene therapy that open up their new way to treat both genetic and acquired neurological disorder and offers the promise of an effective cure for such diseases i am once again very much thankful to you sir for your very informative and knowledgeable session i think uh, that uh, shok mehra is again asking some questions like how can confirm sir methylation happen this is very easy you see because uh, you got it uh, techniques which is available like even gel electrophoresis sds phase or even uh, uh, the selective uh, amino acid like uh, uh, stylation generally is on leucine amino acid it's very much clear for us for methylations we are looking uh, which amino acid is getting affected uh, i think that was the questions who is having uh, the concerns related to how you confirm it it's based on the analytical tools uh, which could be required and uh, if you start working uh, you can just move one by one and even see the structures because raman spectrophotometry spectroscopy we also having so binding even we confirm where it is binding okay okay thank you sir uh, now it is uh, now i would like to honor you on the behalf of the organizing committee and present you the certificate uh, the certificate is displaying on the screen the soft copy of the certificate will be sent to you via email and hard copy we will send it uh, to you via uh, post sir thank okay. you very much okay thank you very much for inviting me all the organizing teams dr monica Thank you very much, Doctor Rajiv. Is here? Uh, no, sir. Okay. Thank you very much to all. Okay.